Hi, welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. Uh, today we have Mr. David Eggerson. Uh, Mr. David is the Executive Vice President at uh, National Bank of Fujiura. And today he is here to talk about a little background about uh, cryptocurrencies, blockchain, the various technologies behind these uh, databases and how these technologies can be used in, in, the, in the coming years. So, hi David. Uh, David, can you just give a little background about yourself? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm very, I'm very pleased. Um, um, today, I'm part of management of National Bank of Fujera, um, taking care about the uh, digitalization, uh, customer experience, and, um, and platform development, innovation, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, previously, uh, I'm here in the region from six years, and uh, I launched uh, one, one part of the uh, funding team of uh, Noon.com, uh, creating a payment platform for, for the, for the, for the e-commerce venture. Uh, before of that, I was in Italy. I'm Italian, despite my name. And before of that, I had uh, payment in the in payment industry, a lot of experience like uh, launching PayPal in Italy, um, launching a prepay card, virtual prepay cards, uh, one of the first one, virtual prepay cards, and then digital banks, many years, and so forth. So you are completely a background in digital platforms and money. So if you, if you look at the, the, the global data analytics company predicts that you know, today there's around $4 billion worth of transaction happened in a block, blockchain technology, and it's predicted to multiply by 50 times. So it's going to be somewhere around $200 billion in the next 10 years or by 2030. So, so that means this, this industry is going to change quite a lot. So can you just give a little background about what is actually a, a cryptocurrency and this blockchain technology as such? That's a very huge point. Um, uh, and I agree with, the, with this kind of point because uh, everyone nowadays is trading cryptocurrencies, and, uh, but maybe they don't know what is behind of that. Uh, actually, um, a cryptocurrency is a token that is generated by the system that is basing all the cryptocurrencies. This is called blockchain, right? Um, to explain a bit how it works, let me make an example, okay? Assuming that we are in four people here, that we are four peers, and uh, we want to take uh, note down of all the transaction, we are taking just, we have a block notes, okay? With paper, and uh, we are taking down the transaction that we are doing between us. Assuming, for example, that um, I want to send you 10 dirhams, and um, the trans transaction 10 dirhams, I'm sending out 10 dirhams, I'll give you 10 dirhams. So all of us, one by one, is writing down in, block no in the block notes the transaction David sent to Kiran, Dr. Kiran, 10 dirhams. And we are starting to note. The second transaction will be done because uh, you send me, you send another 20 dirhams to another peers before of us. And uh, for each single transaction, you are taking notes in our block notes, uh, each single transaction. What is that? It happened that we have the copies of this kind of block notes, all of us, uh, for, of each single transaction. When we finish the, the page of this kind of block notes, we are uh, taking off the page, we are folding it, and we are storing, right? Because we have a, a single database. This kind of procedure is essentially called ASH. Uh, the, the system uh, is creating a code that is representing the data that is inside the paper of the block notes, right? And this code is added in a very long block, it's called blockchain, because it's a series of blocks of data, each of them connected between each other. So uh, the existence of, the, of the, uh, this code is exists because there is a timestamp, but it's also a piece of information of the previous node, of a previous block. So each block is interconnected and is very, um, um, the hashing activity is a mathematical kind of algorithm uh, to create a single code, single string of bit uh, that is representing uniquely the, uh, in, the, the, the information of the, in our case, the, the block note page, right? Uh, but it's an operation that is one way, you cannot go back. It's a representation of this kind of content, and given that is, uh, is connected with the previous node, uh, is quite impossible to uh, change. So the entire block, uh, block of the nodes is unchangeable. 
is immutable. And, and in this kind of operation, the hashing, the hashing, the kind of operation of hashing is uh, made by uh, solving a mathematical kind of um, um, yeah, calculation that all of us, all of four of us peers, is starting to do. The first one that is solving the mathematical calculation uh, is rewarded with a token. So that token that is generated by the system is the cryptocurrency. Okay, because the, this token is starting to exchange between us and, uh, and creating a market. And, uh, and uh, for each single transaction, we are creating a, a, a page uh, connected to the previous block. And, and that is the memorizing the entire uh, uh, transaction that we are doing between us. So this simply how is working the, the blockchain and the cryptocurrency. Um, of course, the, the, the mathematical thing algorithm is a bit more complex. Uh, is involved in algorithms like uh, um, asymmetric crypto, uh, cryptographies uh, for ensuring the, uh, the security of the single transaction. Uh, so it has different aspects, but simply is working like that. And I would like to really sh um, um, bring to the, to the reality what is, what is me. Uh, if you're owning some Bitcoin, if you're owning some uh, Ethereum, if you're owning whatever you want, al al alternate, uh, we call altcoin, it's, it's simply, it, there are tokens that are deriving from the fixing, uh, solving the calculation as a reward uh, to, to join this kind of bulk of information in the blockchain. So what are the benefit of uh, having this type of technology in, in the finance sector? Uh, that's uh, 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 simply, I would say four things. The first one, the fact that, as, as you can imagine, we have four peers. First of all, the database is distributed. Whatever could happen to my block notes, uh, can be burned, can be lost, whatever, you always have the, the, the copy of your block, net, block notes. Uh, so the distribution of this, there's no a centralized entity that is controlling or is uh, managing the transaction between us. So it's distributed, that's the first benefit, the first kind of feature, I would say. Uh, the second one that uh, is immutable, as, as I explained, the, the operation, the money operation to append the, 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 the block in the blockchain is, is, is giving the, the blockchain a immutability. Uh, you cannot change information and, uh, and, you, and you can store the, the entire story of the single transaction. So the immutability is another kind of uh, feature. Putting the timestamp in the operation of heading the block is giving other information when happened this kind of information, right? And, uh, um, and, and it's, it's public. The entire, the entire kind of um, blockchain is, public, is publicly accessible. Everyone can see the content of the blockchain. So if you see the, the, this kind of four uh, 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 feature, it can make you see what could be a potential utilization of the distribution ledger, uh, the blockchain, the cryptocurrency. For example, if you think um, every kind of context that uh, involve um, public intellectual property or uh, public uh, ownership of, of the patent deed, for example. Nowadays, if you think, it's a piece of paper. The notary will, is, is something that uh, give you give publicity of this piece of paper. And this guy, the notary, is, um, is putting, is storing, is storing this kind of piece of paper in a um, kind of stock uh, magazine or stuff like that, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a warehouse. What would happen in case something happened to the warehouse? What happened if something, something is going to the warehouse and starting to um, shake all the paper or worse, maybe the, the warehouse is taking fire or stuff like that. So uh, all this kind of aspect, if you, if you think, uh, given that the amount of information can represent through, the, through this kind of technology also an asset, either titled it, this title did, uh, could be represented through an uh, electronic transaction stored safely in this kind of blockchain, immutably and distributed everywhere around the world.
that is one of the main benefits of the blockchain and the cryptocurrency. So where it is adopted, uh, where it is implemented normally these type of technology? In many, in many contexts, as I said, for example, um, given that the token is representing an asset, first of all, uh, the, the blockchain and, and the cryptocurrency is one of the, the, the first technology that is allow you, and that is the, the, the main changer, the main disrupting changer. So far, uh, we were used to transferring uh, data in, through internet between me and you, but that data could be duplicated because it's not through the blockchain, given through the, the, the token representing an asset, I can transfer to you safely in an immutable way an asset or whatever, whatever you want. An asset could be, again, the token, a value of the token or a title deed. And in the future, given that all this kind of system is automated, uh, in the future when a title deed or a property could be also a transferred property of a car. Maybe if the car will be connected with the blockchain, when I will, through my app, I will transfer to you the property of the car, automatically the car connected to the blockchain will, will see the, the change of the property and change the, uh, the, the, the key in which I can access to the car, right? Automatically. So um, another kind of application could be uh, the intellectual property I just uh, mentioned before. Um, the token is presenting the asset that, again, could be, uh, um, 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 could be for example, a picture that I'm doing, uh, an, a JPEG, that, uh, an art, a poetry, a piece of text, whatever that could be invented by me, this piece of content could be represented by a token, safely memorizing the blockchain, and in this way, yes, of course, you can duplicate it, but the original one is safely um, stored in the blockchain with distributed between us, and no one, nothing can happen, and originally uh, uh, conducted on my, on, on my person. So if you can think how much uh, uh, innovation can bring a technology like that, can, can, how much disruption can, can bring something like that is, is really huge. So there's a lot of future to this blockchain and it's going to change the way the things are going to be on. So if I, in that angle, as a normal common person, do I need to really care about the cryptocurrencies and blockchain? Or? The first uh, answer that uh, my got came out, yes, of course, because if you see also the, the rate of adoption of the cryptocurrencies, um, every week you will know we have some news about the acceptance from the regulation of some country about the bitcoins or other uh, cryptocurrencies. The, 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 there are specific countries or regions that are start to think of, of issuing uh, money through uh, cryptocurrencies. So yes, um, despite I'm thinking that will not completely substitute the, uh, the central issuing money, but part of our transaction will be done in future through cryptocurrencies. Okay, so that means it's important. So is buying cryptocurrency, a lot of people are now like, you know, should I invest, should I not buy or not? So if buying cryptocurrency is regarded more as an investment or it's a speculation because of the price fluctuation? Yes, I'm not a crypto trader, first of all. Um, but, you know, the fluctuation of um, this kind of assets, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, is given from many kind of factors. Um, of course, is uh, if you compare the cryptocurrency world with uh, the other kind of um, uh, kind of investment, is much more uh, uh, there is a much more variable variability uh, frequency. So there is a risk inside. Um, so I would say that the, you can do it carefully, but following carefully this kind of activities. And again, for example, if you I, I would also um, um, try to say that uh, I would push people to know more about the each, sing, each single cryptocurrency because there is a, nowadays the 50% of the cryptocurrencies in terms of value is Bitcoin, 30% is Ethereum, that is another kind of blockchain with other features, very interesting, uh, like smart contracts, for example, and, and others. Um, and the other, the other kind of bulk of cryptocurrency are the alternate coin. And uh, each of them, they have a specific story or specific application or specific feature. So knowing 
uh, this kind of feature or how, uh, the history of each single altcoin could works to understand better and maybe invest in that kind of crypto, uh, cryptocurrency. Thanks a lot, uh, David. It's a, it's a very interesting area. It's very technical too. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult for a common Indeed. man to understand the real algorithm or the way it works. But uh, thanks for your time and coming and giving a little background about how the technology and innovation is playing a role in blockchain and which leading to uh, cryptocurrency, the technology, the way it is getting adopted, the, the use of this thing and the future of it. And, and thanks a lot. I'm sure a lot of our students will find it much more interesting and valuable listening to your uh, information. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.